Hi everyone, welcome back to Spring Boot Essentials. In this video, we are going to see how to work with the web client. At some point in time, you will need your service to communicate with other services, and for that, Spring Framework provides us with a web client called REST template. So we are going to see how it works, and we are going to execute the request to our own service. So I'm going to start Docker here, and I'm going to start my own service, and I will create a new package here, and I will call this package client. So let's go back to the early days of Java and let's create a class here. Let's call client, client consumer. Well, this name is a bit difficult. Let's call this, let's call it spring client. And um, just add the public static void main method. So, what Spring offers us to execute requests? Well, Spring offers this class right here called REST template from package uh, web client the REST template. And uh, this REST template, it's uh, incredibly powerful, especially if, well, if you are working with Spring Cloud. But for the purpose of this training, let's keep it simple and let's see the most used functionalities. So for example, one of the functionalities that I really like is that behind the scenes, this REST template is going to use a library called Jackson. And this Jackson is going to parse the data that's coming from your endpoint. So let's see how it works. So if we check here, you can see that uh, we do have some uh, arguments that we can send, but I'm going to uh, just keep simple. Yeah, let's keep it simple. And uh, let's start with get. Get is usually always easy. So we have two options here. We have get for entity and we have get for object. Let's see the difference between the two of them. First, we have to define the URL. So for example, here, the URL that we have, it's a local host, 8080 slash animes slash and let's start with an ID here. So we have two options. We can send the ID like this. And second one is the response type. Let's give the response type. The response type is the class that uh, Jackson will try to convert the JSON to this Java code. So let's start pretty simple. Let's go easy here let's call this anime response entity and let's use slr4j so the first thing log.info response entity and this response entity as you are going to see is going to return several attributes inside including the response of this endpoint so let's just uh, execute this. And we get 404. Dun, dun, dun. The source not found exception. Well, 404 is uh, pretty straightforward. Actually, I just remember that we don't have ID number one. So that's the problem with 404. I never know if you have the right URL or the right resource. So by changing to two, we do have here our response. And as you can see, we have here inside the response entity object, we have the status. And then you have uh, extra data. You have the object, in this case, the anime. And then we have the content type of the request, transfer encoding, and way more information. So if you want to retrieve the information that is inside this object, you just search for the get body. And by having the get body, you will see now that we have the object anime. So as you can see here, directly the anime. Well, sometimes you don't want to, to have it like this. Sometimes you would like to get the anime directly. That's why we have the get for object. So the get for object, We'll do exactly the same thing, but now we do have the object directly. Yeah. 
Let's see. Oh, connection refused. Get for object. Let's execute again. There you go. I don't know where we got the connection refused. Uh, there you go. We have here the enemy and um, the object directly. So this is one thing. The second thing that I want to talk, it's uh, sometimes you don't want to send the URL directly. You would like to have like placeholders and you can have placeholders like this. The name actually doesn't matter because you have just to send as a parameter comma separated. So as you can see here, we have uh, some var args that we can send several attributes. In this case, we only want to send uh, two. And if you say that we, you are going to expect this and you do not send, what's going to happen? You will get an error because we have something missing. So it's uh, not enough variable values. So you just have to send the value right here. And let's execute again. And again, the connection refused. There you go. So, as you can see, we have here the same results, but now we could uh, have this placeholder somewhere, for example, inside the application.yaml, and then we just replace the URI variables. So, this is everything that I would like to tell you in this uh, video. In the next one, let's continue talking about the web client. See you in the next video. Bye.